All right. So welcome back, guys. Another another PvP build video. Um, this one is going to be called Bullet Train because it's fast. And you hit. You hit hard. You're like a train, all right? Anyway, this is closest to something I had in 1.6. In 1.6, they didn't have everything as major or minor expedition yet. Um, so you had more control over speed if you wanted to, which I played to my advantage as a, as a stab sort. So that's going to be happening here as well. You're going to see you see some big speed. Um, so let me start with the gear. It's always a good place to start. This is using Vicious Ophidian. Two on the body. I have legs and chest. The notice of divines, you can't get them in impen right now. Probably can once they fix that in, in trials, but for now, divines. Um, and then a three piece on the jewelry. So we're doing the five piece on this. This is basically crit chance, reduced stam cost. When we kill enemies, we get stam. We also get major expedition for 20 seconds. And then some weapon damage. Now the thing about Vicious Ophidian is it's its own version of Major Expedition. It's called Quick Serpent. It stacks with Expedition. It's pretty nice. We're going to use that. Big speed. Next, we have three Alchemist pieces on the body. One, two, three here. Okay. So that's our five medium. Up here I have, um, I have a shoulder with in-pen. And then I have a helmet with divines because I don't have one with impen. That's why I've left it in purple for right now. Um, we'll come back to the Undaunted set. So we have three alchemists on the body, and then we have two alchemists on the back bar. So a lot of people were asking me why I use dual wheel with this build, because I have to. Because if I want to use a two-hander on my main bar, and I still want to use alchemist, and I still want to have a two-piece Undaunted, then I have to use a dual wheel to proc alchemist on the back bar. So we'll be on the back bar. Um, we'll use a potion. And then we'll flip to our main, main two-handed bar. Now, as far as my bars go, they're pretty much the same as what I had on my last build. Minus, I don't have the bow slot here. I have Quick Cloak, which gives me a major expedition. Now, this is a pretty cheap skill. Okay, so Hurricane's giving me minor expedition. This is giving me major expedition. So between them... I ramp up my speed, and I sprint a lot. Um, so we have that. The only other thing that's changed, I mean, other skills we have, we have Shuffle, we have Vigor, Dark Deal, Front Bar, Crit Rush, Streak, Dizzying Swing, Rally, Reverse Slice. So this really runs the same as Super Knot in a lot of respects. Still have Smiting here. Something I changed up I was playing with for utility. So I'll tell you, I, I do enjoy Engine Guardian to an extent. With this build, it may not be the best. Um, and I'll tell you why. is because I run away from my Dwemer so goddamn quick. Sometimes I don't even get the beam. Um, what it is good for is when I, when I 1VX, I really enjoy it. I can pull way away from the fight and just get all my resources up and come back. Now, the Engine Guardian doesn't do it alone. Um, you know, usually I would go in Dark Deal. Now, the thing is with Dark Deal is I would run off and I'd Dark Deal my stamina back. I usually use tri so let's put that on. I would see, I'd go Dark Deal my stats and say I get this guy and he just procs health. And now I'm, I'm out of Magicka. I'm still trying to replenish my stamina. I'm just sitting here like, come on, come on, let's go. So I, I added this in the back bar and I haven't played with this much, but I like it so far. I really do. Um... I was using Spell Symmetry. So this is from the Mages Guild. Might seem a little crazy, but you basically take away health, take away 5k health, you gain about 3k mana. And the thing about it is you can't heal yourself for four seconds when you do this. Um, other people can heal you, though. So another guy can Vigor you, and you can spam it, and you'll be fine. If you have a healer in group, not really a problem. 
But even if not, again, you have so much speed with this build, you kind of disconnect from the fight. And I can come over here. Uh, and basically, I'm casting a lot. And then I get this guy, and like, like, let me show you. Let's burn out our stamina real quick, just as an example. Um, shit, where's crit surge? I don't even have crit surge on here, my bad. Crit surge is supposed to be on the back bar. I'm just switching this up. I just came out of PvE, and I usually have crit surge up front. Um, should I guess we're going to drop Vigor off here? Right? Yeah, okay. So, let me again burn my resources out. Say you're in a fight, you've burnt your resources, you streaked away, you ran out of mana, you just sprinted, right? And you happen to get this guy. In this case, it happens to be him, which is great, if I do. Um, but that's that's not going to happen all the time. <laughs> it's going to be the health guy sometimes, which is what I want to show you. Or the mana guy, right? So anyway, here I can dark deal my stamina up. And then I can spell symmetry in. And the other thing about spell symmetry is it makes your next skill cost a lot less. So I was actually using that with Crit Surge. A problem, the reason I started running Tri, um, tri Food was not only to be able to Dark Deal more, <clears throat> but also so I could put Crit Surge up in fights. Because Crit Surge is good. I just, I really like Rally and Vigor. I like to have them up. But Crit Surge is up for a while, 32 seconds. So if I can put that up, come back over here, Hurricane shuffle, quick cloak, come back, main bar, rally. I'm good to go, and I, and I have, like, at least 20 seconds fighting with it. It's just I usually burn out my mana like I'm escaping from a fight. I'll streak twice, and then I start dark dealing, and I get this health guy. Now I'm out of stem, and I'm out of magicka. And it's like, what do you do? Well, throw, you know, to like, two spell symmetries, and then I start dark dealing my stem up, then do one more spell symmetry, crit surge. You see how much less it costs there. See, crit surge normally is chunking my mana bar. But with a spell symmetry, no problem. It almost costs, it costs so much less. So I was doing spell symmetry, because, I mean, look how much health spell symmetry is actually taking. It's, it's really not that much. And you can't heal yourself, but you still get health regen. So, I mean, doing this and then crit surging and coming back, it seems like a little thing to point out, spend a lot of time on, but really makes a difference. And I'm probably going to integrate this in a lot of my builds, spell symmetry on the back bar with, with Dark Deal. I really like it. It's a cool thing. So I just wanted to spend a little time because, that's pr again, that's probably going to be in a lot of my builds now. I'm going to try with try it and play with it just as a way of, of keeping my regen low but still managing my resources in a big way. So um, anyway, I kind of went through the skills. Quick Cloak, yeah, not really for damage. It's really for this speed. This also gives you mitigation, though, from AoE, 20% mitigation from skills that are considered AoE, which really covers a lot of skills, actually. Even things like, I think, for example, like Meteor is considered an AoE. Um, there's a lot of skills that will be considered AoE that you'll take damage reduction having Quick Cloak on in a big way. So that can be helpful. As long as it's not like a pure single target lock on skill, you're pretty good. Um, let me go kill some people and I'll show you the speed of it really quick. Let's go out the bleakers for now. It looks like there's something going on there. The other thing is uh, the monster sets are kind of interchangeable. You don't have to use Engine Guardian. Um, <clears throat> In fact, I'll show you a clip real quick where inside keeps, I was using Veligrinth, which I like to do, and I'm going to show that to you real quick here. Um, let me take me away here, and I'll just talk over this, and I'll show you this fight. This is up on my YouTube, but um, you'll see what I come into here. I see a lot of AD, big party. So, uh... <clears throat> so I come over here and I switch to Veladrin. So I'm here with Issa and uh, an Eskar, a small group. So we run into the front door because they've breached the side. And we're going to... Uh, <clears throat> we're just going to wait and do our thing here and burst them together on their push. 
which is what we do. <clears throat> and this is, <clears throat> so far, this is kind of like super not pretty much in, in, the, in the sense of how it plays. The real difference is going to be your speed and stuff, and your sustain will change a bit for the better, actually. So that was a big hit there. I'll play that back for you. Just let me slow it down. Just to show you, again, what Veladrinth can do. It'll be an option, I'd say, for the build. <clears throat> you don't have to uh, obviously run it, but you'll see me running it in this build, only in side keeps, probably. In open field, Veladrinth's shit. Because if you're on any sort of elevation, like if I got a Veladrinth proc on these steps, it won't hit. You have to be on flat ground for Veladrinth to work. It's, it's bugged in that sense. <clears throat> so be forewarned on that. Uh, I'm aware of that, and I only use it in situations like that. But again, Veladrinth, very good for, for busting. You know, I come in here, I dawn break this pile. You see it proc there, the Horvor explosion shot out all three directions, and, and people just die. So it's, it's, it, it hits as hard as Dawnbreaker, pretty much. Give you an idea. But what I want you to see is the speed. Okay, you see my arms glowing white? That's the vicious proc. That means I've killed somebody, and I have 20 seconds of speed. Um, right now, this is without minor and major expedition. So I have 30. Now I have Hurricane up. Now I have Quick Cloak up. I still have Quick Serpent. We're going to go around for a, a flank. Just You can see how quickly I move in for a flank. Um, But same thing here, I come in, Veldrinth will proc with Dawnbreaker. Little Horrors going out. So Veldrinth is good. Again, you'll only see very limited use of it from me, though. I will try to use it indoors in flat areas. It, it's, it's definitely an effective set. Like right there, it just proc'd but it missed that guy. Uh, it'll shoot out in front of you wherever you're at. Um... And some people don't have Veladrinth, and some people don't even oh, have Engine Guardian. Baby. So if you don't have that, then you can just run Blood Spawn or something too. This this build doesn't hinge on an Undaunted set. What what the real key factor is the move speed. This this move speed is great. But you see, it still has the impact. Like I I don't lose damage really running this build versus the other one. I remember this. This is another good example of Veladrinth proc. There's two guys in this room. Here comes the healer. I go on the healer. I spin around to get a Dawnbreaker angle on him to get all of them. Here's a the Dawnbreaker. There's the Veladrinth proc. See it go out. Boom. They're all dead. All three of them instantly. So that's some use case out of Veladrinth for you. Um, again, it's not key to the build. You'll, you won't see me running that set a majority of the time. You, I'm not even 100% on any Undaunted set. I just enjoy using uh, the Engine Guardian a lot of times. It's very good for self-sustaining out in open field because with this build, I can create separation when I want. I'll show you what I, I'll show you what I mean. I'll go kill some people and, and show you the speed pretty much. Here's our Beamer. Hardly did any damage to him. It's perfect. So until I get the set procced, I really don't have that amp speed. So we're going to work around until we get it. Because once we have it, we gain a lot of freedom and movement. Here come the beams. It's inevitable. All right, there's... There's clearly a, uh, a large contingent of EP out here. So, got to pick and choose getting a target. See, I just outran that, that Dwemer. This is where it becomes, starts to become questionable. But here's an example of how I can spill, spell symmetry some resources back. I'll kick up my mana, get my stam right there. One last spell symmetry. Put up... Um, 
crit surge, redo these buffs. Lastly, I'll do a quick cloak, pop an alk pot, come in. Oh man, all right, he died, but I didn't get him, unfortunately. These guys are gonna be tanky as shit. It's two Templars with guard on, it's not even worth my goddamn time. This is some, some silly stuff to fight alone, but this is where you really want to group. That includes a negate. Probably not the best example of a uh, place I should be is in the back line. These guys will pull their entire raid for me, though. I know these guys. And that's what's going to end up happening here, but... I don't, I don't want to just sit here and pivot for you all video. There you go. I got Beam. They even popped a Templar Ultimate as soon as I came in on the backside. There's a barrier. I mean, this is the kind of shit that happens when uh, I try to PvP out here. So this is one of those scenarios I'm going to try to dip some resources, although they are hot on my tail. They are right behind me. So you want to be careful when you use Spell Symmetry. You really do. And this is without Vicious. I don't even have that amp speed on top of the speed yet. But once you get it and you, you can kind of mow through people, it becomes like a chain effect of move speed. So, that can be useful. Son of a bitch. So now we have it. There's the two Templar tanks. These guys are just going to beam and tank on... Pretty much unkillable. Two Templars. Shield blocking Magplars with beams and guard. It's just stupid. Fortunately, I can just fucking run away from them with this shit. Kill the rest of their group. Happy to do that. And now they're pretty much getting overrun. See, this is... So here's the move speed. This is the real move speed of this. When you're procced up, like, no one's going to shake you with this. So I can't kill these guys, but I can keep them from retreating. You son of I mean, they just, they're just running those really aggravating uh, builds from, from Magplars right now that are just kind of, they're kind of ridiculous when coupled together. If you're one guy, your ability to kill that is just non-existent. It's not going to happen. So really even wouldn't bother trying honestly you need at least two people to to burn through magplars with guard and heavy armor well, i didn't get the buff from that which sucks mm. pot's about to come up more stamp sorks. I'm seeing more every day. This guy's using Veldrith, but you see how it just procced? It went through people. Like, don't don't bother trying to use Veldrith in open field. It just doesn't fucking work. Not until it's fixed. It needs fixing in a big way. So this is what I could have tried to kill alone with a second guy healing him. It obviously wouldn't have worked. But yeah, once you have this up, like, I can I can stay with people that are on mounts. That's uh, that's the capability of move speed on this. Quick serpent's not even up anymore. When it is, it's obviously it's it's some blazing fast speed, and you can kind of maneuver however you want. It makes it a very good one uh, vx build. Just because you can you can disengage fights you don't want to, uh, or if you get outnumbered. You can disengage them as well. So there we go. Now it's procced. You also become kind of hard to target. Again, you also gain stamina on kills too. So if you don't want to fight this... You want to figure out what they actually have since they have people in sneak that are magplars. There are also these 
As you've seen, guys. Let's switch to a healing pot real quick. So again, huge, huge movement. Great ability to move around the battlefield. And you can use this to really headhunt targets, which is what you want to do. Find light targets in the back. Keep running up on them. You just have to, again, be aware of what threats will take you out and uh, be careful in engaging them. Anyway, that's uh, kind of a, a quick demo of it, although I'm going to be PvPing more with it here. I just wanted to kind of cut something for a video. Not the best example, but again, you can see it on stream. I'll have clips cut of it using it, um, hopefully to like more unique effect. When I'm actually getting the distance. I, I, I can show you the CP again, too. I should have done that earlier. You son um, of a bitch. Right now, I just jammed up Warlord all the way. I put a little more in a sprinter. Uh, I put 60 in a tumbling. Um, everything's over here, mighty, bit in the precise, more in the thumb. Reason, people are asking me why so much in thumb. It affects your initial Dawnbreaker impact, even the first hit, not just the dot damage, so that's important. I wasn't aware of that before. A um, little more into resistant could even stand and even put more in there because I have multiple divine pieces. You're going to have to when you run vicious. Um, and then just kind of a even split over here on these three. And then summon a quick recovery for healing. And that's pretty much it. All right. Do I want to fight nine guys? Nope. Split them out. So this is the thing again where I can create distance. Flip my mana. I flip my stam all the way up. And these guys are bringing the whole fucking party for me. So uh, this is if this is a kind of a one-way ticket, staying here to fight, but. You know, whatever. This guy's dawn breaking. He's ready to go. Alright, we got the vicious proc early. Which is great. Crit rush is not really working too effectively. The DC guy totally 100% dipped. He's like, peace, good luck, you're on your own. I couldn't finish him. This dude's running flurry on me. It's fucking hurting, too. It sucks. I should have had that Nightblade closed out. Would have made a big difference. Honestly, I should have been able to kill those three. I should have had Caltrops and a trap in that room, but I didn't. But I want to pop some tunes on. Um, but yeah, that's pretty, much, that's pretty much it for the build video. Um, I may even cut it sooner. I don't know. I'll cut it at some point in there, but... That's pretty much bullet train for you in a nutshell. Use whichever Undaunted you prefer. I may be switching out the Engine Guardian for some fights. Indoors, I'll definitely tr be trying Veladrith out. That's the one thing I really didn't get to test a lot with the build, was what, uh, what Undaunted sets I really liked with it. But I'm enjoying Engine Guardian to an extent, but sometimes you just run away from it too quickly with this build. Slower builds, you get a lot more out of it. So. Yeah, I hope you enjoy this one.